there he is. What's going on, man? What's going on? Not so hey, much. We're, we're just talking about so- Jason Domingo. Yeah, we're, just, you, we're you're doing like we're joining you in like mid uh, podcast, so we're just free flowing here. But we did you see the Domingo's uh, video today of him talking to the reporters? I saw a little bit of it, like he he did it in English. Yeah, whatever. like that's yeah. fucking nineteen years old. Like that's insane to me. Like that yeah. is awesome. Uh, and I mean, I, I can't uh, like whatever shit talk anybody that doesn't speak two languages because um, I only speak one. Yeah. But I could, you could always tell like the intelligence level of the like young Latins if they have already learned English by nineteen. Yeah, they're like smart, you know. So like, yeah. you see like, the, the guys that can like speak fluent English early. It's like, all right, I I got a lot more respect for them because I I wouldn't be able to do it. I think I learned, I had like eight years of Spanish and like a few of them were like was in college where you can just like take the lowest possible level that you learned in like third grade just as a semester. But I like, I probably had seven to eight years of Spanish throughout my life. I know the basics. I took eight years of Italian and nothing. retained almost nothing. I, I know how nothing. to say, uh, I say, yo, studiato per, per otto anni. Oh, fuck. I can't remember the sentence. I it's like, basically something. I say, I studied Italian for seven years. Ma, he'll, but fuck, io ho dimenticato molto. I forgot most of it is the sentence I know. What we're say. getting at is like, it is really hard to speak two languages yes. and like have the, like where the questions you get as an athlete, like with all the shit that goes on, like throughout the season, like to have the confidence talk. That's, I thought that was very cool. So that's, that's incredible. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So you what's, got a cool apartment. There. Yeah, what's going on? I like that art in the background. I guess you're, you know, I got like a, a millionaire or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> girlfriend uh, is a pretty good decorator. So yeah, it looks good. Where, are you living in Manhattan? Uh, I'm in Manhattan right now. I'm going down to Florida uh, March 3rd. Um, so yeah, I'm down in Tribeca. Nice. Oh, nice. I uh, I put up like a card thing. We put up like a card. One of, like what he has, but it's like poker cards. People were shitting on it. I got really sad about it. I thought it looked really <laughs> cool. And yeah, like, that just feels like feels like you're like forty making a man cave. How do, how do I live without fucking one of my friends? What do you, what do, you do? I mean, I, I can't my talk yeah. I, I have one painting in my in my room. It's a thing of New York City that is cool looking, but it's about this big like i thought it was gonna like be as big as you oh or dude something. those websites are so deceiving, Very deceiving. with the sizing of because it just it looks strange. you have to look at it compared to like anything else in the room yeah like if sometimes there's a lamp it's like okay what are we doing here it's it's so and they, your apartment looks cool is the base light that just yeah you did, it, did a good job with that <laughs> um so pitchers and catchers are supposed to report a couple of days ago and didn't happen um we're not, I don't want to get you in trouble with any of that. So we won't really discuss the ins and outs of that. And you can't say much. Um, Who's your least favorite owner? <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely going to be no comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and why is it Steve Cohen? <laughs> <laughs> no, if anything, he would love Steve yeah, Cohen. Yeah, true. Steve Cohen probably is like, fucking, we'll pay whatever. Steve Cohen's like, let's put the CBT in like one billion. Yeah, he's also an SEC park. Whatever. We'll move on. Um, how how weird is it right now? Um, how much does it suck? Because like you're in the prime years of like you know your your career and it's no season right now. Like that that's got to just be such a damper on everything. Yeah, um, especially like it's just bad for the sport, you know. Um, and like fans, players, owners, everyone's got is hurting from it. Um, obviously, it hasn't officially been delayed the season at least. Right. Um, but. It, it, it's one of those where it definitely sucks. The only thing is, and this is why I'm really proud of the union is they're trying to help the younger guy. So that's me, you know, so it would actually in turn help me get more money, uh, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and typically, um, and this is, so Jameson Tyone is our player rep. Mm-hmm. And um, we also have Britain and Cole on the subcommittee. So a lot of times Britain and Cole are the ones that talk to the team about union discussions um but tyone was saying they've already made hundreds of millions of dollars like they're they're good with themselves tyone wanted to be the guy that can kind of translate it to the younger guy that really hasn't made that money um and so that and and then i think the union kind of took that and ran with it where they, they realized that the guys that are in the prime of their career are making little to nothing compared to how much they're making for the the uh the mlb so i'm really proud of, of our union and and fighting for the the younger guy because it, it, it in turn helps me. Yeah. I saw the owners went up a whole $10,000 with the minimum salary today. So the, yeah, we're really getting close to a, uh, to a deal here. <laughs> <laughs> That's, and, uh, and it's one of those where like, 
I know neither party wants to budge because no one's really hurting right now. It's not like we've missed a paycheck. It's not like they've missed any TV deals. It's, right. it's, it's not really going on. So I know they put the deadline at February 28th and I'm obviously very hopeful that these meetings every day, it's going to turn into something. Um, but uh, if you want my honest opinion, I, I think we'll definitely be delayed a little bit. And then that's when one of us will have our backs up against the wall and kind of concede a little bit more than, than we've been conceding. What yeah. does that deadline even mean? That's where the MLB gave the debt. Like we will officially delay, announce the delay of the regular oh, season. Oh, delay of the regular season. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Like, uh, after the summer camp, uh, like the COVID year, um, we did a three week summer camp technically yeah. whatever, for training. And then you saw a decent amount of injuries. So we kind of said that four weeks was the, the lowest we'll go. So if we don't have a deal by whatever, the last day in March, then we'll, or last day in February, then we'll have to delay the season. We were saying, maybe you tell Jameson and these guys, how about we push it back to pass those, those first 14 games. You you know, guys we got, got. A April 15th circle. You're, at, our, uh, you're at Texas. You're at Houston. You're at Toronto home against Boston. We, we miss all those games. We start in Baltimore. It's a tough gauntlet. You're we, not going we, <laughs> to, we're not asking you to say that you want to run away from it, but like, all can right. we not start against those fucking teams? Yeah. Like, maybe we start, start off the season in Camden yards some like Yankee stadium, second home that, you know, think about keep that in mind. Think about this starts the season at Baltimore, at Detroit home, the Cleveland home, the Baltimore. Oh that's just a, that's just a, a game. That's just a warm blanket to start yeah. the season instead yeah. of a fucking those, that, those could be the division winners. So yeah. yeah, we don't need that. I'm not gonna ask you to say anything, but I'm just, <laughs> just saying if you want to slip a word to Jamie, I'll be like, hey man, we could ask a nice two weeks, just more relaxing, just saying. And I, I don't know if you know this, but do you if there is a season delay, do you think they would rework the whole schedule? Or do you think you'll just be like, fuck it, pick up on this day with whatever? You know, I have no idea because I would assume that both of us want a full 162 game season. So I don't know if they would just cut our off days by a, a ton. I <laughs> have no off days and double headers and all that kind of stuff just to get 162 in. But then that would be reworking the whole schedule. Um, so I, I really have no idea. I hate seven inning double headers. Do you like them? I feel like you get to start those games, so you might like them. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, the only thing that sucks about that is when I'm starting game two, I'm still like in the pen as the long guy game one in case our like starter goes down. In the first so you have no idea what's going on. Yeah, no. Um, but I, I would like the double headers if it's like a known thing that we're going to have an off day and then a double header where if we're at the field forever and then it's like a rain delay, rain delay, rain delay. All right, cancel it. Double header tomorrow. That kind of sucks because I would just like sit at the field the whole time. Um, but I don't mind the, the two sevens. Um, if it's like planned beforehand. Okay. Fair. I just, I, maybe I'm just a fan, so I don't play in the game. So I don't get tired and I don't have to oh, deal with really? it. Yeah. No. So like, I, that's why I like what, like more baseball than me. Like, Oh my God, this is fantastic. But my whole, I don't have to talk to anyone today. I'm just going to watch the Yankees tweet a little bit. Great. No problem. But I don't play. So obviously yeah. um, I feel like maybe it's a little better. This is one. If Marty was here, he'd be like, well, I played for the Jackals. I played minor league I baseball. fouled that one ball off that one yeah. time. And you I know, played I'm, a D three. Yeah, I looked down Marty on all was... you people. <laughs> Um, you had yourself quite the year ups and downs, uh, finished on, I feel like on a good note, um, a very good note, but what happened with the weights? My God. Uh, I'm never going to escape this. I, it, honestly, it's one of those where I just wasn't paying attention to, and I mean, I had, it was only a 60 pound dumbbell in my hand, but I wasn't paying attention. I was talking to Brett, our, uh, strength coach, as I was re-racking a dumbbell and didn't realize that like where it was. And, um, so I went and basically went to drop the dumbbell down and my hand got pinned up against the rack. And then the dumbbell kind of snapped my finger this way. And it, it tore the ligament that connected. I, I can't, yeah. I, yeah. I actually think right, I have this, the finger. I'm not even kidding. I think I have this right now. I've had, I've bent my finger back, leaving my room uh, on the door. And for two months, I felt like it's this finger feels like it's Did broken. Did you just say you hurt your finger leaving your room? Yes, I, I caught my hand caught the caught the like doorway. So same thing that happened. The exact same like, thing. Yeah. But I actually think I have something going. But I'm not going to treat it, so I'm just going to keep it going. But that really <laughs> and credit to you for admitting it because Aaron Rodgers obviously you fought football obviously right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So he had his toe injury while he had COVID, and he refuses to admit how he hurt it. At mm -hmm. least you admit your injuries and how they happen and like, you know, silly as they, as they come, whatever. But yeah, it's unfortunate. Everything with weightlifting, you know, people always get on like Voight, Judge, like these guys are too big to be body lifters. And then here we have King. He can't re-rack a, a 60 pound <laughs> dumbbell. <laughs> oh, come on. I mean, I was trying my best. 
I was trying to stay in shape. Did you no. did you have like PTSD of like did you not go to the weight room for a while after that? Well, after the, the next program that Cressy wrote for me, when the, there was one exercise that included a dumbbell and everything else was just like barbell or kettlebells or whatever, and he wrote like, "Please be careful with this." <laughs> And it took me a little bit. And then, I don't know, I did like a a fake to like a 20 pound dumbbell curl or something like that in front of uh, Brett. And he was like, Whoa. So I I just caught a lot of heat the whole season, basically. Did you, when the moment it happened, was there like a, I don't want to tell anyone this happened. Like, I just want to, I'm hoping this is just fine. Or did you tell someone like right away? Yeah. So it happened uh, when we were in Seattle and it was one of those. So it, it was like the second exercise I did in my lift and it hurt for like, it was that immediate, like kind of, Ooh, that kind of, I don't know. It was like a sharp pain for a second. And I just wiggled my hand out and Brett said, you okay? And I was like, yeah, I think I'm fine. And so I finished my lift. I was fine. I was in the bullpen that day in Seattle and I was sitting there and I looked down at my hand and it looked a little fat and I was sitting next to Chad Green. And I said, Chad, does this look fatter than my left one? And he was like, yeah, I think a little bit, but like, you'll be fine. Who cares? And then I woke up the next morning and it was like double the size of my left hand. And I was like, Oh my God. So then I, I ended up having to call our trainer and be like, Hey, I don't know what's going on. And I showed a picture of it. And then that's when I, know, I went through a little bit of it where I only got an x-ray and the x-ray did, obviously didn't show any bone problems because it was the ligament. So then I had, and I tried to like throw through it um, while we were in Houston and then the all-star break. And then right after the all-star break, it was still bothering me. Um, so I went and got an MRI and that's when they said it was, it was torn. And because I kept trying to throw through it, it didn't give it, uh, ligament enough time to heal so it's one of those weird things where like there's so much stuff in your finger where you don't actually need surgery or anything the ligament stays right there Mm -hmm. um you just need to give it time to heal so then i needed to take a full two weeks off and that's why i had to get 60 day because it ended up being really like four weeks from no of no throwing got it there's always i'll never i've never gotten an mri is what's the hesitancy like with getting the x-ray and not the mri is it a whole different, you know, like, do you, I don't know. Is isn't a, the MRI you're underneath, you're like, you, you're like basically like claustrophobia in that thing. Yeah, almost. Um, okay. I would say like, it's one of those where I, I really didn't think that there was going to be any like ligament damage on my finger. So, and they never like asked to do it. And once they saw that, like the x-ray came back as, as everything's totally fine, then I was like, all right, yeah. Basically they said it's all pain tolerance um, and, and swelling. So once that goes down, you're fine. And I was like, all right, well, I don't want to be a bitch i gotta like throw through this and even mm-hmm. though it was killing me i kept trying to throw because they said there's no structural damage mm-hmm. um if and this is where it gets a little iffy like if, if you have an elbow injury and you don't want to go and get an mri because it could show something like really bad and you're in a contract year or whatever, whatever it is you want to avoid that mri as much as possible especially if you're and like as a baseball player your elbow and shoulder are, are going to be like brutal regardless um so we, I, I would say that we kind of try to stay away from it and hope that like, it's just a bad day and it'll be fine after that. Cause the MRI could show something that's worse than we want to know. I've been avoiding the doctor for like a year and I've like chest uh, I pains all physical, the time. I have a physical tomorrow. So I, I totally side with that stuff. Like not yeah, wanting to find squeezed. out what's worse. What'd you say? Cool. Right, time to get getting his ball squeezed. I'm always afraid of, uh, <laughs> of like getting a boner when the doctor uh, is like, let me check your, uh, I mean, not because I'm turned on by it, but like, it's just, it's so embarrassed. Like when, when he says, pull your pants out and cough for me, and he cups your balls. Like what it, happened it, today with the, the dude, uh, there were two coworkers, uh, walking around blind, uh, test testing, um, was it Debbie's cookies and then a homemade cookie. And you had the, the people were blindfolded. And I've never seen someone so terrified well, to get blindfolded. I don't like guy. not having my sense of sight. And it was also a mask. You I was were making like, sure you... nobody fucking put it on their mouth. And then I was putting it on my eyes. You thought you were going to get drugged. I, I just don't like not being able to see things. I don't that like was... when people are behind me either. That was alarming. Can't, can't was, blindfold Tommy. Um, you had, so when you come back from the injury, you were, and we kind of cursed you at the start of the season. That's on, no more in-season interviews while we're having you on now. Well, that's 20. not. Yeah, I mean, maybe we have him on in the middle. Let's not. No, no, cold. I don't think he wants. I only, I think he'll refuse, and he's smart to refuse. But because you started the season not giving up any runs, then you came on, and then it all. I went mean, to that shit. was bound to happen. He was going to give up a run eventually. But then he had the finger injury too. That was so far after. <laughs> it, his problem is he didn't come on again. Okay, whatever. Yeah, you were really good in September. Like out of this world good. You find you find your your groove in the pen, kind of as that two inning, three inning guy that like the Rays have like seven of, and now we decided kind of like, oh, let's just do that. Starting pitchers kind of getting removed out of the game uh, slowly but surely, and that two to three inning guy is becoming super important. 
you got really, not really tested, but you got testy at me. Our first ever meeting when I said something about you, like, I don't know if there's room in the starting rotation. Like, are you cool being a reliever? And you're like, no, I want to be a starter. And I was like, oh, fuck. Now he just hates me. But now that you have this success, I'm sure you still want to be a start. But like, have you been more open to being coming this like two to three inning machine guy? Yeah, I would say that when I got the high leverage opportunities, it's like one of the most fun experiences out there. Cause now it's whatever a one run ball game in the seventh inning. And you're, I, I just remember being at Fenway and like whatever it was, it was late September and at Fenway one run ball game. And it was like second and third with one out. And I came in and I was just like, this is, this is it right here. And like Fenway's going nuts like that. that that's what you want. Um, uh, and, and so I love those high leverage situations, the long reliever kind of thing. It's one of those where it's a mindset. And especially as a young guy, it's nice to just pitch. Um, and I get the adrenaline from just pitching, but then once I started to have those outings and then now I come in in like a six run ball game in the fourth inning, it's just not as fun. So I'd much rather start the game or be in high, high leverage. Obviously, whatever my role is, I'm going to take it, uh, like whatever, I'm going to give my best effort. Um, but I just see the fun in the game being that um, starter or high leverage. So I, yes, would still love to be a starter. I'm still training this offseason to be a starter. The day before the lockout, Matt Blake texted a bunch of uh, basically every pitcher, giving them like a, a little throwing progression to follow. Um, and I was lucky enough to be in the starter uh, group chat, I guess. Okay. Um but I think that it's also one of those where if I'm not the starter, you can easily move me from five innings to one inning or five innings to two innings, where if, if you're only building me up to be a reliever and then all of a sudden they need a starter, now I'm in trouble, you know, because uh, I wouldn't be able to build up that fast. So um, I think the safer bet is for me to come in and to spring training as a starter and then kind of work down from there, um, depending on roles and situations. But um, yeah, I, I'm still really trying to like fine tune all four pitches to make sure that I have like a starters repertoire going in and, and hope that I can kind of solidify myself. And I know I didn't, I didn't capitalize on, on the starting opportunities that I had. I know Kluber went down. So it gave me, I think it was five or six starts before, um, uh, before I got hurt uh, and they were fine, but it's one of those where I, I definitely wanted to capitalize more on them and I'm hoping to get another opportunity where I can really capitalize on it. Yeah, you can make more money as a starter too. So that's probably yeah. <laughs> something. But you know, like, <laughs> what do you think of the way the game is like, sort of moving to like Hub said? It's almost like a certain pitch will never be gone completely, but it's almost like guys are just pitchers now, where it's just like you you might be asked to start for two innings, three innings. Like and October, we'll fucking... October starters go like three innings. Right. Now. Yeah, I as like a, a career starter, like throughout my whole life, uh, I am against it. Um, I also think that it totally wears down your bullpen. You saw Chad green have like a hundred innings and which is just ridiculous out of the bullpen. Mm -hmm. um, and so like you start to feel that in September, October uh, and, and hitters start to like, see you Chad green's got two pitches. That's why he's not a starter. He's good. One, uh, however many times against this guy, but once you're in a seven game series and you got to face guys, however many times and Chad green's coming in every day, it's a lot harder to get outs. And I like, even if Garrett Cole is facing the guy seven straight times, it's going to be tough to get him, to get him every single time. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a firm believer in like letting a starter go because that's, I always love that when a, a, a manager had my back and was like, yeah, King third time through the order is still my guy. And it gave me a lot of confidence. And then it also saved the bullpen a little bit if I was able to do my job. Um, so I'm still a firm believer in that just because I was a, a, a starter my whole career. Um, but I mean, it, once playoffs comes, it's, it's, yeah, it's just a crapshoot. It's like, if that, you don't, you don't want it to become a three, four run ball game and now you're, you're in a hole. Um, so if that starter doesn't have it, you can't ride him out for six, seven innings, um, yeah. of five, six run ball game, you know, I want to say, you don't, you just, I just want you to hear this because you, you responding wouldn't put you in a good spot, but Saturday, October 2nd, 2021 Yankees are hosting the Tampa Bay Rays. They need one win to get into the playoffs this weekend. You remember this. We had yeah. to win on Sunday. One, 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 to, get, one to get a home play. Oh, yeah. Just no, to, to get fucking get in at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. It was like we were playing with whatever. It's like a 7-1 game. I'm there at the game, like just trying to enjoy my Saturday. And um, Mike is warming up. And the bullpen down 7-1. to one. 
And I was furious because that meant we couldn't use him on Sunday, the all or nothing game. Like we have to win this game or the wild card game. And he comes in and it also messed with your September ERA, which was like brilliant. And it was just no reason to put you in. And I just well, this was, was October. So. No. Okay. What is some, it was early October. Okay. What it messed with his and it messed with his whole ERA. And I was very upset because there was just no reason to bring you in. And you come in and you got an out. And then there were runs also coming in. And it drove me nuts. That's how important you were down the stretch. I was so mad they used you in that game. And I'm pretty sure you were ruled out for the wild card game, right? Uh, no, I was I was actually coming in the ninth inning because Chad was struggling. Uh, but then he okay, then all right, the ninth inning. Okay, but like yeah. you, you probably can go multiple innings in that, probably right? Probably, yeah, probably not. Yeah. Uh, so that was, and I, I guess I will comment on this. It's nothing, nothing bad. I I was actually sitting in the bullpen, and I knew that I was getting abused. I was throwing like every other day, back to back days. Right, whatever. that too. Yeah, and um, and I was sitting there, and I I was sitting next to Chad, and I said am I up today? Like, I feel like I'm down, but we're also down seven and I'm looking at everybody else in the bullpen and it's Clay Holmes, Chad Green, Chapman. It's like our guys, Loisaga. It's it's our guys. And I'm like, there's no way they're going to send one of these guys out in a six, seven run ball game. And as we started to kind of unravel, all of our pitchers were getting used. And I was like, I think it's getting close to time for like me to come in this game, even though I felt like I was down. Um, and then, yeah, it did not work out too well. I definitely gave up a couple of runs. I gave up but the ball. game was over by then. So it's like, that's not on you. It's whatever. And, but then it was afterwards in the clubhouse. Booney came up to me and he apologized. But he said oh. it, it's honestly one of those where, like, we really had no other option. And I, I, it made me respect Booney a lot um, by just doing that for me. And I, I understood he was in a pickle. You know, like, hey, there's nobody else to throw there. You'd much rather throw me than Loisaga and burn Loisaga for tomorrow, you know. Um, so I was just like, I'm totally fine with it, especially because we won the next day and we got to the playoffs. It was right. Fun. So um, I, uh, sorry, I, I just recently became a Boone guy. I was a long time, not on the Boone bandwagon. Um, I read an article about him in the New York post that was sort of a fluff piece, won me over. Um, so I now want more pro Boone propaganda. That mm-hmm. was good. Give me a little more. What, what, all right. What was your initial, you're mentioned in this article, was, by the way, by the way, so just to let you know, did you see that? I did not see it. No. Well, it was, uh, it was like, cause he's not allowed to talk about current players. And it was like, uh, throughout the whole thing, like Aaron Boone actually only mentioned three players by full name, Michael King, and then two players from the 1980s Phillies. And it doesn't say what he so said. So either you're in a you. lot of trouble. That was yeah. a really good thing. But <laughs> that's probably, I feel like it was probably a good thing, but was, yeah, that's something to make you maybe nervous. Imagine he just went on a King rant, like this fucking guy. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, everything's fine. I just fucking hate Michael King. But anyway, <laughs> what what was like, uh, or what was your reaction when he was re-signed? Were you at all surprised, or like, were you like glad to have him not back? At not at all. I mean, he he's one of those guys that like he he almost is like a player in the locker room. He walks around the locker room. He's still a young guy. He obviously has a ton of experience in the locker room. Um, so he's been around us and hanging out with us like a player. So I was very happy that he got re-signed. I have a great relationship with him. I still think that he has. Uh, he, he, it's honestly one of the toughest jobs in, in, in baseball. We were actually just talking about it um, with the guys that I was throwing with. Like you could see like Girardi aged like a president. Booney's yeah. aging like a president. Like it, it's just New York media is tough. Being a, the Yankees manager is whatever. Like, like you're like you're in politics and you're getting roasted every time we lose. Um, and so I think he's got a terrible uh, or he's got a really, really tough job. And uh, it's really tough to manage it. And I think he does an, an awesome job with it. So I'm extremely happy that he's here for, was it, was it three years or two? two three I years, I think. Years. I think three, uh, yeah. yeah, mate. But uh, Quinn Frazier said the same thing about the president. Remember the, yeah, yeah. Being on the, he, he said it more of a broad scope of being on the Yankees. It's like playing like, for the White House. It's like playing something. for the White House, whatever, with the way yeah. people react. And that, so the, the guys that I've been uh, with, this off season, Ottavino opened up his lab again. I don't know if you heard about that. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I've been, I've been there. Um, and then what, there, there's a, a whole slew of guys and obviously Otto played for the Yankees, but then a bunch of other guys hadn't played for the Yankees, but they've obviously played against the Yankees. And they said, it's just like a totally different mentality. One, even just having the Yankees come into your home stadium. Like you, you just feel like the aura of the Yankees or when you're playing in New York, it's just like a totally different feeling. One of the guys that are, are, uh, one of the guys used to be a clubby. And so he was the one that was like, 
like even just carrying the Yankees bags was like s- s- totally different than carrying like the Rockies bags. It's like, they're nicer. They're, they're like, everybody's coming in here and everybody just looks like a superstar. And I was like it, sitting there because that I was gets me going. Everything right? you just said gets me like, I was sitting oh. there like pumped up and I was like, that's exactly what, like we talk about that when we're going through slumps and judge and Gardner are talking to us. He's like, we're the damn New York Yankees. Like, everybody wants to beat us. Like we're the guys that, they, that uh, like these guys are afraid as we're walking in. And it, so it, it kind of like fired me up that it's actually true that these other guys are, are thinking that. What yes. were some of like, like you mentioned speeches where I feel like you got, it was last year were such up and down where so many like down moments, how many, so many player meetings, I feel like. Yeah. How many like different, are there any player meetings or anything that was said from judge Gardner, anyone that like sticks out as like, huh, that was a moment. It, it's, it's one of those where, I'd say judge is the guy that um, commands the locker room. Um, And I wouldn't say there was anything specifically, especially because how we played almost the same thing had to be said every time we just needed to figure it out. Um, And like, it's also one of those where like those kind of things are supposed to stay in the locker room. I'm sorry to give you. Right. right. No, I don't need exact quotes, but judge judge is the guy that like, after he talks, you, you come away from it. Like one of the, run through a brick wall. Um, and especially if judge starts like swearing at you or not at you, but like in the meeting, you're like, okay, this guy means, means business. And, and you want to, you want to get going. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. So it's like when he's being serious and angry, you're like, you want, you want to step up even just for him because of how he, he commands a lot. Oh, that gets me you know, I kind of compare to random mo- you're, I'm going to, this is a weird thought that caught my head. along came Polly. You ever see that? <laughs> You ever see that movie? Of all the movies, I thought you never seen Long Came Polly. God damn. Well, Ben, saw ben Stiller's like, dad does not talk at all. And then at the very end, he's talking sense to him in the middle of everyone. And like he's never like said a word. I think it's his first word the entire movie. And everyone just like it's like, what the fuck? They've never heard you <laughs> talk before. And it's like kind of like that impact or whatever. Aaron Judge and uh Ben Stiller's dad and yeah. Long Came Polly. Same he's person. Swearing, yeah. <laughs> um number 73. Is that staying? Is that yeah, staying I, with I, you? I so hope not. <laughs> I've been I've been begging to change it. You Literally. wanted 21, huh? You wanted Paul Neal's 21. <laughs> That's why they retired it. No. Um, I uh so I after my first like in 2019, I only had 11 days and I didn't know like how much time you needed until, but I was talking to Hap and Hap was 34 and I wanted 34. And Hap said at the end of the year, he's actually gonna switch to 33. And when Hap switched to 33, he texted me. He said, Hey, I just texted Robbie or Clubby Kakuza. Um, text him and say, like, will you just change all of Hap stuff to my stuff and give me 34? And and I totally understand it. Robbie's like, because we've retired basically every number, whatever, one through 20, um, I need to keep the low numbers. And 34 is actually a low number technically for the veterans. So he said it might not be until after the 2020 season. So I wait till after the 2020 season. I had the full year in 2020. And I was like, okay, I've now had a full year of service time, whatever. I asked again. And he said, here's the deal. It's yours. But if we sign a veteran and he asks for 34, I got to give it to him. If you make the, uh, make the team out of spring training, 34 is yours. We signed Justin Wilson. Justin Wilson asked for 34. So I don't get it in 21. So I asked Robbie again this offseason, and he said the, he said the exact same thing. Again, if we don't sign any veteran that wants 34, it's yours. But so I'm hoping, and he he said this year that he's going to try to like hide it from people. And like if we do sign one, he's not going to put 34 in like the list of numbers right. that they can choose from. Um, and just hope that no one asks for it. But so did you want to fight Justin Wilson all year? <laughs> yeah, the whole time. Uh, but, and I actually asked him about it because I know I, obviously being like innocent, I was just like, hey, like, do you have like sentimental value to 34 or whatever? And I guess his number was actually 43, but he saw the wise guy had it. So and he just switched it. So 34 really wasn't even like a, a nothing to him. Yeah. Why, why is 34 matter to you? Uh, so 34 has been my number for a while. It was my number in college. Um, and really, I, I just like the number seven. So three plus four is seven. Um, and then also my, so my grandfather actually died in, uh, 2020 and, um, he was born on March 4th of 1934. So that's three, four, 34. Um, and so that kind of like made it the sentimental value to it, but Hey, this is like really weird and awkward. I have a lasagna in the oven that needs to come out. Is there any chance I can pull it out real quick? Yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. <laughs> Don't you bring it and show us? <laughs> <laughs> you want to see it? Yeah. I want to see the lasagna. Yeah, we got to judge All the right. shit out of this. Come on. You're going to judge it. Yeah. It's what the internet does. 
Seriously. This is a great angle. It's gonna. It has to go back in. You have really good Wi-Fi. Can you invite us over to this apartment? This I didn't know like you a... were in the city. This is fucked up that you haven't been asked us to like hang out. I I just moved in for so I, I need to uncover it and then. Let's see. Uh, you made this yourself? Yeah. Oh, that looks exactly. pretty fucking solid. Can you see? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like I like the way the cheese is melted on top. For anyone uh, listening, go watch on YouTube. Go subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can see Michael King's lasagna. <laughs> All right. I'm impressed Sorry. with the Wi-Fi. Sometimes I don't even have. No one has good Wi-Fi filling in their apartment. That's really good Wi-Fi. Um, but that was okay. So I didn't know the thing about your grandfather. Uh, it makes me think that actually, if you get 34, you're gonna be like, you should tell them like, I'll just pitch better with 34. <laughs> Yeah, you got. You have to give it to me. I'll just it, feel comfortable. The other, the other reason was was like Halliday was my like picture that I really tried to mold oh, myself. Yeah, thirty four. So um, that That's all made it into I wanted thirty four, and I was hoping that now that I have a little over two years of service time, I could get it. Um, but I just gotta hope that we don't sign a veteran that likes the number thirty four. Yeah, Freddie Freeman's five, so he can't have that. So I wonder what he's gonna pick. Well, we'll if see. He picks thirty four. Sorry. I know. Seriously, I'm screwed that way. <laughs> um. Uh. Oh, real quick, automated strike zone and the pitch clock. Do you like that? Do you hate it? Because it's coming at some point. I'm not a fan of the automatic strike zone. Um, I think that one that totally diminishes the catcher's job. Um, and I also think that the like relationship that a pitcher has with an umpire, uh, can be molded. And so I think it actually helps you out a lot. Um, I know that like the, the best pitchers are the ones that can kind of nibble and see that they get that call so they can try to continue to expand. Um, I am a huge fan of the pitch clock. Uh, I had it when I was in the minor league. So I think that a lot of the young guys probably would like it or not care about it just because they've been pitching with it for their whole professional career. Mm -hmm. Um, And I also, uh, it got the hitter in the box too. And that was a a big thing where I feel like there are a lot of times where I'm standing on the mound waiting for a hitter to get in the box and get ready. And I know the, in the minor leagues, at least when I was there, I want to say it was a 20 second pitch cut pitch clock and the hitter had to be ready at five seconds. Um, so the, the hitter only has 15 seconds in between pitches. Um, and that was in 18. I don't know if those things have changed. Um, but so that was like how I was raised. And I also was told like, whatever, change speeds, work fast, throw strikes. That was the basis of pitching. And so I always liked working fast and, uh, and so I'm hoping that that is the way of the future, just because I think it's good for the game. I, th- I, I, I love the like chess game that baseball is, um, but I think it can be done faster. And we're, we're big league talents that, that, that can do it at elite speeds. So why not make it a couple seconds faster? So you um, blame hitters for being slow. There are definitely the pitchers that take their time. Tanaka, I, Tanaka was comes to mind. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There, there are some pitchers. Um, but I, and I'm, I'm just saying for my own personal self, like I mm-hmm. like catching the ball, getting right, right back up the mountain, going. And a lot of times when it starts to delay is when I have a, a hitter that that's slow. Um, the other thing that I actually was just talking to my dad about, the TV t- timeouts are insane in college and in oh, minor league ball with no TV. Yeah. There's no right. time, so I would go out there and have like. 45 seconds in between innings. And now the hitter just has to be ready when I'm ready. Right now it's 225 for normal games. I want to say it was three minutes for um, like playoff games or, or like the primetime TV games. And yeah, that's where they're making a ton of money off those like ad sales, but like, that's a good, I don't know, adds 20 minutes to a game there, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Or- I don't want to sound like Marty here, but at, when I pitched in little league, I hated warm up pitches. I would throw one and be like, let's just fucking go. Yeah, I'm just yeah like, it's probably slightly different shit. gearing up to like 95 miles per hour. It's, I threw like basically, yeah, it was really fast, but yeah. So I topped out I, I about 43 back in the day. 43? Yeah. Really good. <laughs> nice. Tim Wakefield, you know. Um, did you see the vent? Which I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't change the temperature. Hold on. Oh my <laughs> His apartment's going to burn down. Yeah, that actually would suck for you. It'd be great for ratings. See, Michael I need, King's I need, apartment I need, I need burned. <laughs> Michael King's apartment right. burns down live on the short porch. <laughs> That's a good what? vlog. When That's did you start? Uh, when did you move into that apartment? 
I, I actually came in November. I uh, decided to yeah, offer. So we've here. had plenty of time to hang out. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, but no, I, so I, I came in here in November. Um, I really like wasn't here for basically all of November or December. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been here like for, for all of January. The Tyone was the one that convinced me to be here. Um, because we were going to, he had his ankle surgery and then we were going to be uh, at the stadium, like, and we'd have a throne partner and, and just someone to lift with and all that kind of stuff. And then obviously the lockout comes and I was like, well, what the hell am I supposed to do now? So it was a like, kind of a hectic December and I was all over the place. And then I finally, um, out of, you know, like started his lab again. And, and I ended up figuring my routine out, but um, that was a, a little hectic time for me. For sure. How mad is Clark Schmidt that no, it seems like JMO is your new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> um that uh, jmo i will say have you ever talked to him yeah, yeah he's come on he's great well i mean it, unbelievable like he, he was one that like in spring training one of the like second times i talked to him i was like all right this guy's gonna be gonna be like my my, my guy and i would say like chad he was green, about to say best friend he stopped himself from saying best friend um chad, chad green and monty were like my two originally and then uh and jmo comes in and now he's like i guarantee you Cole would say Jamo was his best friend. Monty would say Jamo was his best friend. Like we're so pissed that Kluber's gone because Kluber was such an awesome dude, and, and Jamo and Kluber were tight. So it's like Jamo is a great player rep because he's like he's he, he's just everybody's best friend. He's a good dude. He'd he's, win a game of Survivor. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're a big Survivor guy. Yeah. If if a game of Survivor broke out on the team, I feel like James and Tyone would win. Unless he's too big of a threat, where you wouldn't be able to drag him to final tribal council. But that's true. And he can make a coffee. And he can make uh, coffee. How's his coffee? Yeah. I'm, great I'm, and I'm, I'm not even a coffee guy, but I would go in. It, it, usually every day game is when uh, I'd go in and get it. But he makes like a, a pour over or whatever. And he started doing it for uh, Booney in spring training. He actually just told me the story. And then once the season started, he thought that Booney wouldn't want it because now it's not in the morning. And uh, Tyone would then like walk out to the dugout with four cups of coffee, giving it to like Cole and Monty and like all the starters and Higgy always wanted one. And Booney called him over and was like, Hey, where the F's my coffee? Like give me some coffee. And so Tyone then like had to put him on the dock. So yeah, Tyone's his own little like Starbucks in there. And then he's got his off or he's got his like whole coffee shop set up in Robbie's office and it's it's good. He's, he, he's got a good job. Are there any he other start charging for that by the way? Are there any other current Yankees like living in the, like what do you do? Like what what are you like doing in New York City? Like what I it must be cool to like be a New York Yankee and live in the city and like be a young guy. Like that must be fun. Yeah, I, uh, I'm lucky to have my, my girlfriend here. So she's, and she's been here since college. So she's like, she's had her, uh, she, she has all the spots. So I'm, I'm able to go to awesome restaurants. And that's another thing, like using the Yankees connections to, to get. What are your favorite spots? I mean, like Carbone, it has to be like a, one yeah. of the best. Don Angie was another one that was really good. Um, I'm really close to La Conda Verde down here in, uh, in Tribeca. And that's another good one. Um, I went to Peter Luger's a couple weeks ago. Um, and so like we, my girlfriend and I have been trying to just like go to a bunch of different spots and really like find, like hit up as many as we possibly can in New York. So that's I, really what I do. I'm trying to become a lounge guy. I feel like I, I, I go to like clubs a good amount. Like, I mean, there, I mean, you probably, but like, there's like common ground, the palace somewhere. Nowhere. I don't think he's going to common ground. No, I'm just saying like, but yes, you've been there. I've never been to Common Ground, but I've heard of it. Yeah. The Palace is the new place I'm going to go. You should go to the Palace. That's the uh, place Marty like thinks he knows everybody, right? I know I know people there, too. We, we can get you in, Mike. You mentioned right. Don Angie. That I think that popped up on JMO's Instagram story like a month or two ago. And I've been trying to go with my girlfriend. And it is booked every time I try to go. It, like I think I need to do this like three months in advance. That place is very, very popular. It's And it's I think it just got a Michelin star. Um, but it was one of those where we had a great connection there and then uh, like through the Yankees and then Tyone somehow talked to the GM and became like best friends with the GM and now just text him whenever he wants. And nice. they only have like eight tables or something like that. Okay. I want to say two, two of them are for the public. The other six are like reserved for people. And so then, and JMO will text the GM like a couple days in advance and be able to get those rest. So JMO goes all the time because it's an awesome dinner. And Is it Italian? Yeah. Yeah, time. I'm gonna try it's, to go to this place like before the, you do. Honestly, one of the best lasagnas I've ever had. It's like a better than yours. Oh God, yeah, yeah. 
I might need a DM JMO. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Megan, help me out. <laughs> like the, the foodie that we all go to. That if I'm like, don't know anything on a menu, I'm texting him a picture of the menu and be like, hey, what do I get here? He, he knows what to do. He's just, yeah, he's just like he knows everything. For everything. Yeah. Um, I've got one. We were going to bring on your sister in a, in a second here. I got one last question. You're a good athlete. You always post like, your golf thing or whatever. <laughs> what a funny thing to say to a professional baseball well, player. Well, oh, there are you're some a, baseball, you're a good athlete. There are certainly some baseball As players who are like microphone. There are some baseball players I would not say are good athletes. Uh, I feel like they're for the most part got to be pretty good. Okay, but what I'm saying is like usually you see like you an officially NFL, have Hubs's blessing as a good fuck athlete. You. <laughs> you usually see an NFL player try to swing a baseball bat. He looks ridiculous, right? Like, but you know, baseball players like. They play baseball every day, but it, is there anyone on the team who like is just so bad at one sport? Like, just if you ever see them golf, you know, shoot a basketball, just like it looks like they just have no idea what they're doing. So I don't, and he's one of my good buddies, but Jordan Montgomery could be the most unathletic guy I've ever seen. <laughs> I can see that. Um, how he runs, how, how he does. He's a obviously phenomenal pitcher, he has a great mindset for pitching. And has a phenomenal arm. If you see him run, it looks like a praying mantis. And I'm sorry, Jordan, but it's like he holds his hands like this as he like runs. And it's just it's just funny to me. I've never really seen him do any other like play any other sport. I've seen him throw a football, which is similar to a, a baseball, um, but I've never played golf with him. I've never seen him like shoot a basketball or anything. So I can't really say he's a bad athlete, but just kind of how he moves. I'd say he's not a great athlete. When you have the nickname Gumby, that's usually not a good sign for us. But like his body almost reminds me of mine and that it shouldn't look that way. It shouldn't move the way that it does. Like it's like it, the, a no control of motor functions like that. That's sort of the same vibe I get, I guess. So I can see yeah. that, except he's like a great pitcher. Other than that, Jesus. he's got a few motor functions that are pretty elite. Yeah. I always picture him running with the jacket on, like the heavy, the big heavy yeah. jacket. Like it just fits him. Like I don't know if I could actually picture uh, Mike wearing like the jacket. Like, I feel like you're just like just running out there. But Montgomery always has it on, just running yeah. as slow as humanly possible, taking that like turn on second as like cautiously as humanly possible, <laughs> just like you. But he won't fall like you probably. Yeah. I used to get picked off second base. That was my move. Nice. You probably get picked off with like the bases loaded. <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> like, no one's even holding you on. Yeah, I just thought I was like, no, who the fuck throws over to second base? Nobody throws over to second base. <laughs> the good, wrong. the good pitchers, yeah. the, good, the smart people. Um, you start doing that more. Start throwing over more to second base. There's probably a lot of players that think like me that are like, ah, oh, he's not gonna like. No one holds runners on to second. He doesn't have to throw over second. They don't get on second with them anymore. Uh, if he comes thank into thank a you. high leverage situation. Okay, fair. That's I'll fair. keep that. I'll keep you in the back of my mind next time. I thank you. Um. You have, and I'm, I'm, I'll give her credit for your turnaround here, and and for you know your crack into the majors here. Uh, your sister made you your walkout song, and we're gonna bring her on. Is she on? Is she, no. call her? Yeah, call her, tell her. Uh, she, yeah, she has the. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, she we, has the link. Yeah, she just gotta click that. All right, let me just. So when I when did um wait wait wait, wait for oh, okay yeah yeah ask all the questions. Well, this is sort of a question for him, but. Mm. Mm. Oh no! He told me not to do it now. But th this says the video that um, Hub sent me is from 2016. So is this an old song? Uh, so yes, her song. Uh, basically, so she made me the walkout uh, when I was a junior in college as like a, a gift to me. Um, and um, the like goal, and it was funny because we we basically said we need to like play this at Yankee stadium and we need to like get 70,000 fans. to like hear this song and then it kind of could help her career out. Mm -hmm. um, all right, hold on. I'm calling right now. I'm going to mute myself so I can. Yeah, you're good. We're going to cut this anyway. So. Oh no, we'll leave everything until now. Right oh, now. Really? Oh, okay. Nothing's been cut yet. That's true. I say right now, everything we say still isn't cut. I said, we just keep this going. Okay, great. Noah, how you doing? Doing all right. I got to pee, but I'm going to hold How's it. How's your chest? It's swelling. I haven't checked. I think it's all right. Okay. Also, hi, Mike. I'm, I'm no, I'm the producer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not getting through, and this is not good. Oh, come on now. That's fine. It's fine. We're patient. Am I getting big leagues here by my sister? That would be awesome. That's what Phil Hughes did. Yeah, Phil Hughes did that to last week, although apparently he was just really sick. Yeah. Fucking Phil. 
when I call oh. her, it just goes straight to voicemail. So I tried calling her husband and could be do not disturb. Maybe do it twice. Seriously. I, I've done it. it I've done it three times. Now. Oh. Does that defeat do not disturb? Yeah. I think you just called yeah. twice. Oh, I had no idea. It's weird that Apple now shows you when someone silences notifications. Pat Light all the time. Pat Light, I, think people, you text I don't them. think you do. I don't think you, I don't think you do it for specific people. I think no, it's like yeah. you, just you can, on, you can disturb. You know, like eliminate people from the do not disturb. Yeah. You know what I realized? If you do it on your laptop, it automatically does it for your phone. Yes, there's like that. I wish I, I no, you can unlink. You it. can I unlink that because it. it's like focus mode. I always I always have it do not disturb on my like here on my laptop. You could go to I think focus settings. Or, and, okay, yeah, yeah, let's fix that. It was really annoying. It looks like we might have an update. I know I know my mom was going down there for dinner, so I called her and she's not there yet. But I don't know what's going on. Every time it just literally goes straight to voicemail with when I call my sister. She knew she was coming on, right? Oh, and I texted her at like 5.30 and said it'll be like 6.30-ish. Um, yeah, we were pretty on time for the most part. Yeah. All good. We, 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 can, we can hang around. Yeah. Let's see. I'm having a good time. When I, I just texted her and it went through. Okay, that's a good sign. Always happens to my mom when I do this. Just never you know i really I need I, like a year ago i realized my mom had uh me me silenced like permanently on do not disturb that's bad like it was by accident but like it was just per like i had the the moon next to my name um i realized i had my mom blocked on instagram until like oh two i blocked weeks her on instagram. yeah I, I felt not bad your mom, my mom i would hope i don't think yeah. i got my mom's instagram that'd be really weird <sighs> yeah it's just like yeah i don't oh, oh there, there we go she's not big leaguing me but like she teased you enough to to strike fear yeah. in you which i appreciate I, just, I don't know why it wasn't going through does she have a video camera come on now yep. hold on it's going hey there we go. hey guys how are you hello what's hey. going on we thought I you were big leaguing you your like, brother i tried calling you four times it never like never went through Oh, my phone's dead, but it was coming. I got your text uh, through the computer. Sorry about okay. that. There we go. Ah, Jeez, you told me you would text me. Yeah, I, I was. Th I thought it would be faster, but it didn't work out. We didn't prepare Are for the dead phone. <laughs> I I wish I wish we well, we appreciate you coming on, and you are the first ever uh, woman on the short board. So wow. congratulations! I believe. Wow! Yeah, that's Break, breaking barriers here. Definitely wow. true, I think. Right? I think it's definitely true. Yeah. We might have, we're going to have one coming up in a few weeks, I believe. But, uh, uh, who? Wow. Um, Meredith. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but welcome, uh, Olivia I'm King, honored. uh, sister I'm of, Thanks, guys. yeah, sister of Michael King. Um, quick question Who is more famous? <laughs> Mike. <laughs> There's Instagram, Instagram followers. It's Olivia and, by far. And Instagram followers are big. Oh, big, big. Oh, boy. No, they're not. My, Mike gets noticed now on the streets. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, I mean, I, they I, actually I, like I, each I, other. I find it when brothers and sisters don't like yeah, each other, Hubs, it's way better. This is actually nice because Hubs hates a sister. Yeah, Every time know. Hubs brings up its sister, it's just like, oh, a fucking bitch of a <laughs> sister. We don't we don't get along. <laughs> I actually recently said that a woman who, like, uh, a friend of a friend, like all the worst qualities my sister she has, and it was like the meanest oh thing I've ever. Heard. I didn't say it to her face; I didn't like behind her back. Oh, obviously, okay, I'm not. Okay. Like, I'm not a vicious person, but it's nice that you guys like each other. That's good. Um, yeah, so we yeah, like each other. Who, who's who's older? Limits. <laughs> so what? What were were is she like mean to you growing up, or was she like a protector? More of a protector, and then I felt like once I became, I don't know a man i then became her protector okay are there any more siblings or is this it just us two okay if there was a third if like the what's the cooper what's the other cooper brother's name cooper no the other manning brother's name oh, is cooper. Fuck. what's yeah. you know what i was saying <laughs> wow that was crazy i was looking yeah. for and i was saying the answer if you had like a cooper manning or whatever that would be tough if yeah. he was just like a an accountant or something like that well we got a no. yeah a star here but uh no we, we're having you on uh your song is the walkout song for uh, Michael King, and that is awesome. That hear that like blast through Yankee Stadium when he comes in and like comes in and like shuts the door. Now, uh, how does that feel? How awesome is it? Did you ever like imagine when you like you created that song? I want to say in 2016, we said we saw yeah 2016. So like when you made that, like you ever imagine it going through Yankee Stadium? Call the sister's intuition, but I did. I 
when I was writing the song and this happens very rarely but when I was writing it I started getting like full body chills and I was like okay I think we have something here Mike would always kind of joke with me and say Liv you should write me a walkout song he'd come to me every season and be like oh you got any bangers for me to walk out to and I'd be like "Eh, maybe this maybe that but he would always ask me that so one Christmas I decided let me give this to him as a little gift I did the whole music video we literally recorded it at the same time we were doing the music video and cranked it out fast so I could get it to him on Christmas Eve and unveiled the TV with the music video and I just remember him like hitting my leg so hard being like are you kidding me Liv are you kidding me I remember my leg hurting after I was like dang you at least he liked it sibling but, abuse um, <laughs> he, sa- he says that uh sibling abuse. <laughs> yes um but he he says that it's the best song he's ever heard i think he's a little biased um i would absolutely think a song made about me is the best song I've yeah ever, you're talking about like an too. egomaniac and tommy <laughs> yeah. if you write him like it doesn't have to be good at all like a 10 second song he'd be yeah, like a 10 second jingle i'd be like this is the greatest thing anyone has <laughs> ever made in any in any facet of life you'd walk around with the boom box 24 yeah, 7 just yeah. be like i always said that about like a mac miller song donald trump like i know i think he like sued him for it like i would have just been blaring that 24 7 or even like uh i said like taylor swift all too well with, that it's about what's his name Jake Jake Hall. like i would still think that's an honor even though it was a bad song i'd be like oh shit taylor swift wrote a long song about me like that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> so if it's a yeah. hype up song even better, was, even better. has it played yeah. at yankee stadium yet yeah that's true oh, yeah I've I, since 2016, I've, I've had it as my walkout uh, every year. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it plays every time I pitch Yankee Stadium. Um, Glad yeah. to know you're paying attention. I mean, they don't show that they, they, that I haven't been to a game where I can pitch. Here's my gripe. And they don't show that at Yankee Stadium. Here's my gripe because the song is really good. And I'm not going to give you my favorite song ever because <clears throat> I'd be not doing justice to Chelsea Color, who is my favorite artist in the world, but um, it is very good. Thank Why you. isn't it on Spotify? Did you say why isn't it on Spotify? Yeah, I don't. Well, at least I can't find it on Spotify. Is it on Spotify? Yeah, it is. Oh, it I is. might just be really stupid. It's called Messing with the King. I could not. When I went on your, because I, I, I see it all the time on YouTube. That's where. Really? I, uh, I just typed in. You ever like type in Google, Google? I just typed Spotify into Spotify. I shouldn't have done that. Um, <laughs> no, when I. I might not be interested. I'm like, geez, what did someone take it down? It's not on your top five when you type okay, in your. Yeah. It's, it's I not don't... on my top five. Or I'll your top 10. That. Or your top 10. Is it in a 2019 album? Yep. Okay. If, if you type it in, if you type it in, messing with an apostrophe with the king, it comes up. All right. So everybody go download it. And anytime you have a good, <laughs> anytime you have a good. Uh... It's not in her album. Am I crazy? No, it's here. No, type no, in, it's type in messing not. with the king. Oh, okay. And anytime. Uh... Mike has a good outing. We'll just bl- everybody just blast it like ten times. Just hit play like over and over and over again to, to run the top ten. Yeah. There we got. Yeah, we got to get it top ten. Jeez, that's not doing it any justice. I get. You know what? Every time the season comes around, it's like a Christmas song. Like it just, it's the gift that keeps on giving. So every time the baseball season comes around, it it definitely jumps up there. So what? Uh, cool. Were you at all? afraid mike to ask like hey can i make this walkout song like a song about me like was, was that awkward at all well i i didn't even know she was doing it um and I, I just would always joke about it um and then the thing that i guess scared me originally and i'm probably, probably scared you too was like if i didn't like this song now i'm almost forced to keep the song oh, yeah. yeah for my whole career but it was that's probably why I was hitting her so hard was because I was so excited that I actually loved the song and my sister made it and it was about me. So it all like came together as like, this is, this is, this is perfect for me. No, you know? but I'm saying when you had to ask like Yankee stadium or whoever, oh, what like, do you mean? were you nervous to be like, Hey, like, I know I'm just a rookie, but I have this own song already written about me. <laughs> can I make, can I make it my walkout song? Almost, almost made me like feel like a big shot, you know. Like I came in right. there, you know, I was like, "Hey, like uh, I got, I got my own walkout." So, but yeah, yeah this girl like, that just happens to have the same last name as me wrote yeah. it. Total coincidence. <laughs> yeah, it makes it, it makes it a good story that way too. So I'm able to like feel like I'm helping promote her music. So that's makes it way easier to ask. Yeah, uh, ask to get that. Um, who was the first teammate who put two and two together that she was the singer? So or you want to know the funny? 
This, yeah. this is the one, this is kind of whatever, not your answer, but Aaron Hicks came up to me in the dugout one time and said like that he loved my walkout. And I said to him, like, yeah, have you heard it before? He's like, yeah, I definitely heard it before. But, like, I don't know who that artist is. Like, he was like, I, I can't, like, put it together. And I was like, yeah, you've definitely never heard that before because my sister's song. And he was like, oh, all right. So he, like, totally, like, fumbled over his words. But having him do that was cool. And then the other one was was Judge came up to me. And he was in, like, you know how the outfielders come together in center field? Yeah. So, like, whoever's out there. And uh, he said that normally they're talking the whole time. But for some reason they weren't talking when my walkout was playing. Um, and he said he was just like vibing in the outfield to, to the song. And then he came in and he asked me, he was like, what is that song? Dude? Like that, that, that song is like phenomenal. And I remember telling Liv that judge thought it was awesome. And Liv was like, Oh, so you got to write him one. What if you just write the whole team walk, walk up, walk hey, out. Hey, I was thinking about it. I was like, Oh dang. Now I need an all rise song for judge. She could write the intro to the short porch. Yeah. Cause we, so we'll do Tommy song. We'll do Tommy song. We'll do short porch song. And then we do Aaron judge song. I think that's a fair list of priorities. All right. You got it. We can't even play the song on the pop member. Like we can't do the music thing anymore. We yeah. Yeah. Play. We got crazy. She'll copyright. sue us. Yeah, that's true. That would be no, awesome. I <laughs> Imagine. I'll take no. the copy right off. Oh, okay. Maybe we can play a little bit. Okay. Maybe we can do. Okay. Well, I don't know how that works with, uh, cause she could sue us. And <laughs> we'll, we'll play it as our outro song. Okay to this episode yeah you would be crazy though do you know like the rules with you, you're a, uh, an artist like you can't play music on twitter or they just take your like twitter away yeah no it's ridiculous and it actually frustrates me because i go on my instagram live a lot and i'll be playing my own music and instagram will shut my live down i'm like how can you not like put two and two together that like okay this is my account this is the where all the music is coming from, and you're still shutting me down. I don't get it. They should just give artists royalties if that's the case. Like, okay, people are playing your music, or I'm sure most artists would rather have people listening and have it out there than have it be shut down the second you use it. Preach for sure. Preach. I remember I would I got like three DMCA strikes on my Twitter account because I post like it would post like a rod Instagram stories. And it was really? like every single one was a rod Instagram stories. And it's like, okay, this is just, I can't have this be the reason my Twitter gets taken away. So we got to fuck. I, uh, fuck. I don't know if I could find it, but I have multiple DMA, DMCA strikes because I made my own little music video for a rod when he retired. I like made like this little movie. Cause I love a rod of like all his career through the years. And I said it to, and I rise up like by Andre day. Great song. <laughs> rise in the day and I rise up. And oh I have like God. Oh, I so many DMCA strikes. I need a feature. What? Yeah, I could sing. I I could do I, more Sinatra. I yeah, yeah, I need that feature. You actually, yeah, you did a what was the I sang Sinatra. at our I sang Sinatra at Pup Punk, which is our barstool um like punk band or whatever. I sang we did a, a punk version of My Way by Frank Sinatra. You actually crushed that. Oh, and I not I, really. <laughs> I don't give you credit for things, right? I don't think I did that one. No, I did better like when I wasn't on stage singing it. Okay, fair. Um but yeah, no, the song is awesome. Go listen to it. It is on Spotify. I'm just really stupid. Just messing with the king. Um, so go listen to that on Spotify, YouTube, wherever you listen to your stuff. Um, and you'll be able to hear it once these uh, idiots figure out baseball and when to start it. And then when you see Michael King come out of the bullpen or no, sorry, you're going to be mad at me. Not of the bullpen. Come out to start whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, Mike. OK, so just pitch really well. And whatever number you want, just do that. Uh, when the season returns, but uh, thank you both for coming on. Do you have anything you want to uh, shout out, especially Olivia? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously the messing with the King song. It was so cool. The first time I heard it in the stadium was Easter of last year. So praying that we can hear it sooner than later this year. But yeah, you can follow along on on my whole musical journey on all my socials. It's Olivia King Music across the board: Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. You name it, you will find me there. Cool. I don't think she follows either of us. So, oh, yeah. oh she like, wow. Um, Burn. Um, <laughs> I will. I will ask her to tell the story of how she got the idea to uh, write my walkout from Jimmy Fallon. If that's cool. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I was like closing out. I don't know why. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Go for it. No, no, no. It's all good. So I actually. So I got the idea from watching a Jimmy Fallon episode. He had jeter on and they're like in-house band the roots oh, decided to make 
uh, walkout. Have you seen it? Have yeah, seen I know what you're talking about. Yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. make him his own personal walkout because he always came out to like, I don't know, it was like a voiceover of something. I can't remember what it was, but he never had like a real groove and song and the one that they made was just so good and I remember Jeter's reaction being like holy crap that was good and so I literally sent that episode to a producer friend of mine and was like we need to make a song like this for my brother and I probably think I'm crazy and he's just like playing college ball right now but I think that this could be something big are you interested and he was like hell yeah let's do it so I I immediately got on that and um I wrote the rap myself and then I was like this just isn't as hard coming from his sister so let's get a real rapper on here and and we made it happen so yeah it was all Jimmy Fallon the Roots Jeter inspired so it's kind of like full circle how now Mike's a Yankee and it initially was a song for the Yankee that inspired this whole thing so it's definitely cool and coming a little full circle that was destiny that's awesome yeah I didn't even put two and two together when you started telling it like he just wasn't on the Yankees then when that like happened, but obviously not like that's very, very cool. I love that. For sure. Yeah, it was crazy. That is that's fantastic. Um, I gotta get myself a sister, musically inclined <laughs> sister. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you what, they don't all come like that. Yeah, true. Some of them <laughs> suck, I guess. Some of them are just like they they get the mic and just like you grip the mic right back. Don't you dare. Don't say anything else. Um you know be funny. I told you he hates his sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, she doesn't watch. Uh it came up at Thanksgiving dinner one year or whatever. That about the pot. It's, it's fine. It, we've, we've been a lot better lately, which is good. Um right. it would be great if messing with the king was the new uh like the Jay-Z Beyonce, uh Jay-Z Alicia yeah, Alicia Keys. Keys. Yeah, like something. if the a playoff run, like that's like Empire State of Mind run. Or that. So actually, here is here is would be great. In the end of 09, Run This Town came out. And I remember Z100, like it was an anthem for the Yankees and like Z100 remixed it to make it like all Yankee related. It was fucking awesome. It was like the murderer's row went to Shara. And it went away. You can't, yeah, can't find really it. really hard to find. I know but if we make a playoff run this year, maybe a 2022 run this town Yankee version, current players, something to chew on. Thoughts. <laughs> hey, you might have something. Yeah. Maybe include the short ports in like the middle of it, just yeah, like whisper like it or whatever. Shut up, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do my ad libs in the back and just shut Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So she's got like, she got a whole album to write just off of basically. Right, like a well, 20 just, minute interview. Yeah. God. It's all right. I got you. Unbelievable. Um, no, uh, th- that was fantastic. Uh, breaking barriers on the podcast, very important. Yes. Um, and uh, no, we, uh, Mike, we wish you all the best the upcoming season as long as it happens. Um, and we're going to hit 100 innings this year. How about that? How about we actually hit 100? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. And okay. that's, that's, that means I have to start a little bit. So yeah. suck it. Start only no, starting at high level. Start. I want you to start. I, I want you to just really pitch well. So whatever, however that gets you there and how we're just get us another World Series title. Fantastic. I'm all, I'm all. And then you can laugh at me after the season when we talk again. You're like, ha, huh, see, I started game seven of the World Series and threw a no hitter. Fuck you. <laughs> that would really I hope be you're right. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Um, Thank you both for coming on. Really appreciate it. uh, And we'll see you around. Enjoy that lasagna. Absolutely. (laughs)